So now we've got something that works every time. I can put the instrument in our fellow's hands and, and relax. It's well engineered. It's um, one action at a time, as we'll see as we get down the road. We're going to discuss all the different options, though, that we have on the table now. Benefits, technical pearls, most of the fiber stitch at the end, and some outcomes. So the data shows that all inside repairs, if they're meniscal based, are just as strong as inside out. So this study showed no significant difference in meniscal healing between inside out and all inside repairs. If you use the right instrument in the right hands for the right case, you can expect high levels of success. Another paper showed, um, compared the inside out meniscal based all inside and capsular based all inside. So the meniscular base being what we're going to lead up to, the meniscal scorpion is a great option. Here's the meniscal scorpion. You can get circumferential compression with a low profile using an O or 2O suture. It's good for radial tears, good for root tears, which um, we'll talk about with Dr. Max talk in a minute. It's self-capturing. It's a great option. It um, less neurovascular injury risk because you're staying inside the, uh, the, the, the fish bowl of our knee. Here's a radial tear, classic example. Coming in on the anterior side, getting a bite, self-capturing, then moving right over without taking the instrument out and then tying our knot down through our passport cannula. It's very easy to do. It's low profile, said less iatrogenic injury. Still, we always say release the MCL at all costs because we're there. We're doing this to save the cartilage. So we always have to remember as we're teaching courses through the year to remind people we're there to do no harm. We're there to protect the joint or restore it. So the last thing we want to do is create iatrogenic cartilage damage. Here we are stacking a couple side by sides, getting a nice repair. So horizontal cleavage tears. We know from this data and others that, you know, taking it out is not innocuous. It makes it look better. It's pretty for the pictures when we show the family, but we know what it does to the contact area. We can return that if we stabilize the horizontal cleavage tear and in the appropriate ones in a younger person obviously try to do what I call barrel stitches um, just wrap around circumferential stitches and we have a better chance of returning the pressure gradient back to near normal as you can see in this in this one as well so here's a horizontal cleavage tear we've got the top side and the bottom side most of us in years past would have taken out the most unstable leaflet here we can get a wraparound stitch and these often have parameniscal cysts. This kind of shuts down that machinery. We can put some biologics into it afterwards. Got a ni nice little captured nest inside there and this can shut this down. And what it does, it keeps our meniscus. It keeps the bulk function of a meniscus, especially if we're doing like an ACL and we don't want it to stretch out. We have a all inside meniscal ramp lesion repair. Got a nice video online. We've got a passport in the back of the knee. Here's the finished repair going through the semantics. We have this new ramp lasso. It's not perfectly new, but a lot of people haven't used it yet. It's angled just right so that you don't shish kebab the condal, but you get a good nice bite in the posterior capsular piece. Kind of do a, a single pass, but you want to bring that eyelet of the needle up into the crevasse between capsule and meniscus as we're doing here. We're getting our tuck of capsule in the back and it's just the capsule. You don't want to dig deep. There's stuff back there you don't want to poke. Um, so we bring the needle up, make sure we have it kind of pushed past, if you will, a little bit to clear the, clear the site. Our suture is going to roll right out in a second as we propagate it toward us. It should come out on your eyeballs here at about the nine o'clock position. So you got to back up the scope at this point a little bit so you don't pass yourself. So pull back just a little bit. You've already cleared this spot. We come through and that curvature is what makes you miss the condyle. The standard lasso, you wouldn't know where it would come out. This curves in the right direction away. It's got that right little, the correct little angle. And then we roll in our suture and then we do our little suture repair. Here's our knot. This is a modified rotor knot I like. It's a locking sliding knot. It's very simple. It's like an SMC, but I can use it in the shoulder, the hip, the knee. I use it all over the body. It's a, it's a locker slider. It's the one knot I can actually remember now that we do so much knotless technology. So the meniscal cinch too, it's still out there. It's a great device. It's, um, it's um, not the newest product, so we're gonna go through this quick. It's got the two smaller peak implants um, with a 2.0 coreless fire, fiber wire. Um, it's got the one-two punch. It's got the handle, a very tactile um, feedback. When you're the surgeon, you push it down, it clicks, you pull it back. You move over, you push the other side down. Very um, complete, it's a great product. But now we've moved on to the fiber stitch all inside. You don't have to look down. This is true one hand insertion. This is the final arrival. This is, this is uh, the quintessential all inside meniscal repair instrument. It's got the dial in um, 
um, benefit to get the depth. It's got low profile, again, the 2 coreless fiber wire suture, one-handed deployment, active implant deployment. You actually feel it as you pull it, the roller handle back, it clicks and deploys it in that second picture to the left. And then the adjustable depth, same hand, just sliding forward on the pistol grip and you, um, you can slide your depth if you want to. I tend to make it as long as possible so I can really feel the substance of the meniscus. Here's the depth stop up close. Um, two millimeter increments from 10 to 18 millimeters serves the purpose. So we move the wheel backwards until an audible click. So you don't have to look down, it's a click and you can feel it. It's like a little um, wheel on a boat, kind of just, you can feel it. You put your thumb right in there, it's very tactile. And then we roll forward, first anchor deployed, count on it, pull back, get your second spot and implant it again. And then it's got the knotless anchor. This is the up close. You got to see what these things look like. The working end of this is in the back side of the meniscus. It's not in front of you. In, on the meniscus where we get the tangled loop sometimes with prior products. So it's really a soft component on a soft meniscus. Like materials seem to do better. And here's what it looks like on the backside of a meniscal model down on the bottom inset. So here we are, it's, it's a reducing the tissue with the loop. And, and, and Jake had a video that showed this and we'll show a real case in a second. We pull the loop, this is outside the passport cannula. So you don't have to go in there and fish it out arthroscopically. It's long enough that you tighten it. That tightens that first crossbar in the second picture. And then the second one is just tighten down the second loop for the second crossbar, and that's the pulling loop. And that compresses it to your heart's desire. So the final tensioning here we are going in, then you go in with your knot cutter of choice, and there you are, voila, final construct. So the pearls, perceived kickback during first implant deployment. Not a real deal. Temptation to unwind the suture, don't. It's got the perfect wind in it, just pull it, tighten the crossbar, and then pull down the loop with the tightening suture. If, if the straight suture begins to slide, loop reduction is complete, that's true. So you know if your hand on the right hand, when the loop is pulling the crossbar, if, if it starts to pull you in, then you're done. It's as tight as it needs to be and you pull the tightening suture. Uh, reverse curve works great with any row orientation. You can flip your hand around and you've got like a whole arc of um, containment to capture whatever angle you need to. So here's the curve as it looks outside, it's a, it's a loop the, the loop is all twisted. Just leave it like that and just hang on to it and, and you tighten it. That's the first pearl. And then you see this loop when you're tightening, you're like, oh my God, it's gonna get caught. It never gets caught because it's not really a twist. It's just a tight, it's getting tight down near the kink there. It's doing fine. So here are the fiber stitch on, a, on the model that Jake started to show. We're bringing it in. We're deploying it, so we're rolling it back first. That gets it to the, to the edge, and then kicking the, the drive bar, the roller bar forward, kicks it out and actively deploys it. Do that a second time, you move over. Here we're doing a horizontal. You can do obliques or verticals, obviously. Here's the second one being deployed. Roll back again. So you don't have to look down. You haven't even looked down at the device. You're just looking inside with your nanoscope or your, or your regular joint scope. Now, you see that first stitch, that loop is sticking out our passport Canada. We pull that to tighten the first horizontal stitch down at the repair site. You see it, you visualize it, you can feel it, it's tight. Then you pull the tightening suture and come in and cut flush. No knot stack, nothing, it's all in the back of the meniscus. Here's the last case coming in with our implant. This is courtesy of Dr. Smith. He's had the first kind of beta launch. We've done a couple, but our our video actually wasn't as good as this, so I'm using Pat's because he's always amazing and I'm marginal. <laughs> yeah. Here it is going in. It's a low profile too. I, I haven't had to release an MCL in a while and certainly I think with fewer with this because it's just a friendlier, the material, the sleeve, it just doesn't scuff the condyle as apparently as some of the other more rigid products out there. So this is really nice. There's only one loop out there. You're not working your eyeballs around multiple loops trying to figure out, should I go to the left or the right? You just go where you know that needle needs to go and you don't have to really worry about the suture stack in front of you. And now it's just three strands. The loop is two of them. You'll see it pull in, or actually we'll pull the loop out. We're outside the joint and that tightening bar deep under the condyle, you can just barely see it, snugs down. And then the tightening suture gets tight and we're done. So here's a horizontal. This is um, Dr. Judson Mitchell and Lee Pace, who I was with last week. He gave me this picture. You can get these and save the meniscus, joint restoration and joint maintenance. Final slide, soft tissue anchor, soft tissue. It just seems to make sense. It's a like-minded material instead of a hard object behind a soft meniscus, far less likely to pull through. Here's the SOS data, global, SO, or global VAS. Looks like it's doing good for all inside repairs. 
as is the global saying. Looking good after five years, and we expect the same for the fiber stitch. Thank you very much.